Hey everybody, today we're going to go over how to use uh, PlayPosit to assign videos to your students in Schoology. So the first thing we're going to do is go to PlayPosit.com and once you get here in the uh, top right hand corner we're going to click login and then we're going to sign in with our Google account. Make sure you select the right one and then you can hit allow at the bottom. Okay, so these are all videos um, that I have created recently and I'll show you how to assign those in Schoology um, at the end of this video. That'll kind of be the last thing we do. Uh, but I do want to go over some different parts of this page. Um, so you've got a profile section. If you click here, you can go in and fill that out. This blue button is allows you to design uh, new videos, uh, and they refer to them as bulbs. Um, we're not going to need to do anything with Add Students. That's going to happen automatically through Schoology. Here's my recent video section. So all of these are videos that I've recently created or assigned. Uh, then down here on the left, I've got the different classes that I'm involved in. Over here on the right, you get a quick kind of um, overview um, of how students have been doing in your videos. If we go up to the top, the first um, blue button is Dash, which is what you're on right now. If we click over to Bulbs, The first one that it will probably come up on is My Bulbs over here on the left. And that's going to give you access to everything that you've created uh, in the past. So as you go in and you create more videos, uh, you're going to get a longer list of those here. You can sort through them with these uh, three drop boxes. Uh, that'll allow you to narrow down and kind of look for uh, and try and find exactly what you're, you're looking for. The second button is Pre-Made Bulbs. So as you uh, are creating videos, you can publish them to this um, group and then anyone can come in and find them. And that's anyone that uses PlayPosit. So it's not just uh, users at Fairbanks. We can narrow down and find exactly what we're looking for. So if I'm looking for a 6th um, through 8th grade English video, and the, the all content one or standards align doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. Um, but here's one on reflective writing. Um, you can go through and find you know, different videos. And you'll, you'll see the same person a lot of times is creating uh, a lot of these videos. But you can go in and, and select and, and even search for, um, search for key things that, that you're looking for to be able to assign. If you want to use one of these videos, all you have to do is click Use, and then it will allow you to make a copy uh, to your, um, your bulbs, and then you can edit it from there as well. So you would be able to go in and um, add new questions, delete questions, things like that. The next section is Channels. Um, so they've, they've started to pull together content um, from different developers. So like here's one, all, all sorts of videos from TED. Uh, there's another one here from Flowcabulary. So you can go in and select videos from these specific uh, developers. The next page is Monitor. So if I click over here, I'm going to get uh, a list of my courses. And you may not see anything here if you haven't created any courses yet, but if I go into these, I can see the videos that have been assigned. Uh, if I click on it, it's going to show me the data. So this one, we, we've only you know had one student go through it, and there weren't really any questions that went along with it. But for each one of these, you would start to see how many students were getting these questions right or wrong. Um, you're going to see an average score and how many of your students have completed it. Then you're also going to get an item analysis down here at the bottom. So you can go in and click and see specifically for each student which questions they got right, which ones they got wrong, how many they got right, how many they got wrong, and then go in and look at their actual answers as well. 
Using the buttons at the top, I can jump from one section to another, so I can quickly get back and forth and, and be able to see different, um, different videos in each of these uh, sections. Okay, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna design a new bulb. So over here on the, the top right hand corner, we're gonna click design, and then we need a video URL. So I'm gonna go out to YouTube. And I'm gonna find a video uh, that I would like to use for my assignment. So I'm gonna take this one, and I'm gonna copy the link, and paste it into this video URL box, and you'll see it kind of load up, and then that button will turn blue. Then we're going to title it. And give it an objective. All right, then we need to select the grade level, the subject, and a subtopic. You can click this YouTube firewall bypass. This is good for, especially when you're making videos at home, because sometimes you may have access to a video at home that you don't have access to here at school. Um, so if you click that, it will allow you know videos to come through uh, PlayPosit. Rewind during questions. This is one that, that's really um, kind of a personal preference up to you. If you click this button, what it's going to do is it will allow a student to watch up to a question. Then when they get to the question, if they don't understand or they don't know the answer, they can rewind and go back and watch again. A lot of people will leave this turned off to really encourage the students to pay attention while the video is playing because they know they can't go back to watch again. But that's entirely up to you. Once you have these settings done correctly, we're gonna click Begin Build. You'll see the video will load in over here on the left, and it's gonna start playing. And I'm gonna pause it here. If you hit um, Add Question, we get these different options, and I'm gonna kinda of go through each one and, and show you what it looks like. The first one's multiple choice, pretty straightforward. You've got your editor up here at the top. You're gonna to type your question in here, and then your answer will go down here. There's two boxes, though. There's a space for an answer and a space for an explanation. So just make sure that you're typing into the correct box. Once you have all of them entered the way you want, you just click the dial um, for, for which one is correct. You can have it randomize the answer option so that it will uh, switch it around for each student. It won't be the same. If you need to add more options, you can do that here. And you can have multiple. With multiple choice, though, you can only have one right answer. Once I have everything the way that I want it, I would hit Save. And you'll notice this timestamp. This is where the question is going to pop up. If I hit save at five seconds, you'll notice this little orange bar that shows up. That shows me where the question is in the video. If I click back into it, I can, I can move it. So as that video continues to play, if I decide I want it at 14 seconds, not at five seconds, I can move it there and it will Re, um, readjust. Okay. Again, add question. We've got free response. Pretty straightforward. You type your question in. Students are going to have a box for them to be able to um, to enter information into as well. The next one is a reflective pause. So if you wanted to allow students a second to kind of stop and think about what's been stated in the video, or if you wanted to offer some additional explanation you could type up some directions within this box or some you know some notes something that you think would help them kind of process what they had just seen 
The next one we have check all that apply. So similar to multiple choice, you've got your, your question box, you've got your space for your answers and explanations. But with this one, you can have multiple correct answers. This one's pretty key, this skip segment. If I put a time in here, so let's say one minute and 10 seconds, it's going to save this as a question. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna automatically, when this pulls up, have students skip forward to the one minute and 10 second mark. So if I save that, you'll notice how this turns gray. That's because that's a space that the students will not be watching. So it's going to skip through that section. So if you have a video that you really like, but there's a, you know, a two minute part in the middle that really doesn't have anything to do with what you're talking about, you can have it skip that. An ad question uh, website, so you can put a link to a website which will launch the students um, to that website when they get to this point. Fill in the blank. And finally, there is an option to offer up a poll where students could respond. Um, no correct or incorrect answers, just a way for you to, to kind of get their, um, their opinion. And when you're all done on this bottom left hand corner, we're going to click finish build. One thing I want to show you first is this lesson analytics. It will go through and show you uh, how your video is created. So the number of multiple choice, the number of check all, free response, short answer, and polls. It kind of breaks that down for you. Uh, it gives it an overall score uh, based on the number of questions, the types of questions, uh, it also will, will show you a breakdown on the left side of, of the uh, Bloom's verbs that you're using in your questions. So kind of a good way for you to get a, a snapshot of, of um, kind of the types of questions that you're asking your students. Again, when we're done, we'll click Finish Build. And it's going to offer you the chance to assign it, but we don't want to assign it here. So just, just go ahead and hit Save. And here's the link, we don't need that. We can dismiss and we're all good over here right now. So let's go into Schoology. And we're gonna log in. And once you get to your class, we're going to uh, add materials and then this file link external tool. We're going to click on external tool. The tool provider is uh, where we're going to change to play posit. And then I'm going to title it. We don't need to change anything here. If you want to enable grading, you can do that. So you can go in and, and hit, um, you know, hit that checkbox and then change the settings to whatever you would need. And then we're going to submit. And you'll see that this will pop up down here uh, in our assignment. It, it, there's nothing in it yet, though. So we have to go in and actually uh, manually tell it which video we want to be assigned to this section. So if I click on App Developer, now I get a list of all my videos. This is the one that we just created. So if I click on Assign, you're going to see Set This Lesson Bulb as the assignment. So what it's going to do is it's going to take that, um, that video and, and place it inside of that link. And we can hit Set Default. And now, and now this app developer 
page is linked to um, that video. So if I, one way you can do this is to, to try and view the course as someone else, uh, if you have other students in your class, and it will show you how it will pop up for them. And there it is. If you want to watch it full screen, you can hit the uh, expand button in the top right hand corner. I know that's something that, that sometimes students will say is that the video can be a little bit small. And then there you go. And, and from a student's perspective, they can't fast forward. Um, they can't rewind until they have gotten to that point. So from here, I could go back, uh, but once I get to a question, it's gonna pause it, it's gonna stop, and it won't let me move forward. If you get to a page that looks like this, and it's only allowing you to log in, um, almost from a student view, it'll say my classes, you won't see the options up here at the top. The one like the, the dash and the, um, assign and things like that. You won't see the monitor button or the design button. If you get to that point, if you'll click delete account, it doesn't actually delete your account, um, but what it does is it kind of resets things and then it will allow you to log in, sign in with Google, and then it'll take you back through these steps. But all of your information will still be there, like the app developers that I just created is still there. Um, so if you get to a point that looks like that, just hit the delete account button and then re-log in with your Google account and that should give you access back to your page. Hopefully this helped give you an idea of how to create a video for your students to view uh, with PlayPosit and then assign it in Schoology. If you have any questions, please contact either myself or BJ. Obviously we'd be more than happy to help. Thanks.